I'm William Monfield from Public Health 109 Epidemiology. This is my group project on smoking on the campus. As California State University of Fresno is not yet a smoke-free campus, there have been many attempts to introduce the amount of smoking and secondhand smoke on the campus. There have been many smoking areas placed around the campus so that individuals who do not smoke can avoid these areas and reduce the amount of secondhand smoke. As there are relatively few smokers on the campus, the adverse effects of allowing smoking may be outweighing the benefits. From secondhand smoke to the diseases associated with smoking, there are many who are affected. Hello, my name is Erica Ban, and I will be talking to you about tobacco use and the cause of cancer from using tobacco. Tobacco use, particularly cigarette smoking, is the single most preventable cause of death in the United States. Cigarette smoking alone is directly responsible for approximately 30% of all cancer deaths annually in the United States. Cigarette smoking also causes chronic lung disease, cardiovascular disease, stroke, cataracts. Smoking during pregnancy can cause stillbirth, low birth weight, and sudden infant death syndrome, and serious, other serious pregnancy complications. According to the article, Cigarette Smoking and Cancer, Question and Answers, smoke cause, contains thousands of chemical agents, including over 60 substances that are known to cause cancer. The risk of developing smoke, smoking-related cancers, as well as non-carcinogen diseases, increases with the total lifetime exposure to cigarette smoke. Cigarette smoking causes 87% of lung cancer deaths. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death in both men and women. Smoking is responsible for most cancers of the larynx, oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, and bladder. In addition, it is the cause of kidney, pancreatic, cervical, and stomach cancers, as well as acute leukemia. Cancer of the lung is fatal for most patients with cancer. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in America of both genders, with 174 thousand estimated newly diagnosed cases and 162,000 deaths. Breast cancer, lung cancer, and prostate cancer combined do not reach these numbers. Once a patient is diagnosed with lung cancer, it is very rare for them to survive and to be cured. To stop this daily cancer and disease from reaching a bigger population, the most cost-efficient solution is dependent solely on prevention. The sooner a smoker quits smoking, the more positive effect it has on their body. If a smoker would stop smoking by the age of 50, it would decrease their risk by half of getting lung cancer. If we were to compare the risk of females to males in getting cancer from being a smoker, women tend to have a higher risk to get lung cancer and bladder cancer. A study from the University of Southern California says women's bladders may be more susceptible to cancer-causing agents in tobacco. Researchers found that when women and men smoke at comparably high levels, Women's bladder cancer risk is 30 to 50% higher. The warning signs of bladder cancer typically include blood in the urine or change in urinary habits or change in urinary frequency or pain while urinating. These symptoms can sometimes be confused with urinary tract infections, especially in women, which can sometimes delay diagnosis. The delay of diagnosis is important because women are more likely to die from bladder cancer than males because males are being diagnosed 9 to 10 months sooner. According to the article, Smoking Women and Bladder Cancer by Jennifer Weiner, some smoke contributes to bladder cancer because carcinogens in cigarette smoke are absorbed into the lungs and then into the bloodstream. The carcinogens are then filtered by the kidneys, concentrated in the urine, and can then damage the cell lines in the bladder. Cigarettes are the highest risk factor for bladder cancer. The duration of smoking, age, and gender are all factors to the ch chances of being diagnosed. Because smoking is the largest known risk factor for bladder cancer, it is vital for tobacco smokers to be aware of their risk. Relatives and people who spend time with smokers are also at risk, given the established dangers of secondhand smoke. The growing number of ways we know smoke harms health is a good reason to stop smoking or help those around you stop. a shift in the overall health Thank you. of the human population. In the 1900s, many Americans were dying from communicable diseases that were 
untreatable without intensive research and immunizations. Currently, our society struggles with uh, the dramatic effects from chronic diseases, which many avoidable chronic diseases are associated with our poor lifestyle choices. Chronic diseases that people suffer from today is cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease is one of the five leading causes of death in the United States. Researchers have associated smoking with an increase in cardiovascular disease and respiratory complications like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, also known as COPD. I'm going to take a look at the association of smoking leading to COPD. COPD is a serious lung disease, um, which over time makes it hard for the patient to breathe. A healthy lung has healthy elasticity to it um, as you inhale and exhale air throughout the lungs. As compared to people diagnosed with the COPD, their lungs lose that elasticity and create mucus buildup alongside it, which make it difficult for the patient to breathe. Currently, COPD is the leading cause of disability in the United States. The current cardiovascular risk report stated uh, smoking and cardiovascular disease the, has a mortality rate of 35% in association with smoke-related deaths from cardiovascular problems. The cardiovascular risk report also estimates 440,000 deaths, of which 35% were due to cardiovascular disease. Currently, COPD share cardiovascular disease and COPD share risk factors such as smoking, which both contribute to morbidity and mortality rate in COPD. Patients diagnosed for COPD were found to have twice the risk of developing cardiovascular disease compared to those without COPD. There's been many studies done um, in association with this COPD. The one that is well known is the Framingham Heart Study. As mentioned in the class, uh, is an estimating, which estimates the outcome of the cardiovascular disease at different time periods. It's a, one of the tools used uh, associated with um, a chart from the COPD that is broken into categories as mild, moderate, and severe. These categories for the COPD are based off of percentages um, and determine the severity of each case. In, um, in research, it talks about how COPD being mistreated or untreated and unseen because of lack of knowledge and association of cardiovascular disease. A lot of the time COPD goes misdiagnosed, mistreated. This is why the number of cases of COPD is disturbingly high. COPD patients um, underrate the severity of their complications and do, uh, and so do med uh, many medical professions because there's a myth that COPD is untreatable. Currently, there's no proven method that prevents COPD except quit smoking. Um, there is overwhelming evidence that shows that the major problems people face from cardiovascular disease associated with smoking. As mentioned in the article, cigarette smoking and cardiovascular disease which stated the overall impact of cigarette smoking on cardiovascular health will be looked upon as one of the major pandemics of the 20th century. So the only way to prevent cardiovascular disease or one of the main reasons to prevent cardiovascular disease is just quit smoking. As we all know, smoking contributes to many health issues like lung cancer and asthma by directly smoking or indirectly just inhaling the tobacco smoke. Tobacco smoke can be inhaled by second-handing, third-handing, and just breathing the air in the environment. There has been much emphasis on second-handing and third-handing smoke. However, today I want to shed some light on their environment, and in particular the air we breathe in. Many times we do not think of smoking as an issue that affects the air or that it is part of the pollution in the air. But I bet most of you guys do not know that tobacco smoke is an air pollutant and that it produces over 7,000 chemicals and 250 of those chemicals are known to be cancer causing. Some of the products tobacco smoke creates are chemicals like carbon monoxide and benzene. Carbon monoxide is 
known to be a poisonous gas, and benzene is found in most detergent and pesticides. And these tobacco smoke product goes on to contribute to the air pollution. And this will cause a bigger issue as the smoke adds to the air pollution. Because air pollution already has enough chemicals on its own that is causing many health issues. And to add tobacco smoke on top of that would only make the air we breathe in that much more dangerous. And it has become so dangerous to the point that Environmental Protection Agency has started to regulate the tobacco smoke pollutants. Carbon monoxide and 33 other air pollutants from the tobacco smoke is currently being regulated by the Clean Air Act. Most pollution are produced from human-made sources like cars and factories. And you have to consider the fact that there are different kinds of chemicals from tobacco smoke and the air pollution and that they can blend together and create a toxic air for our bodies. In 2006, California Air Resource Board declared the tobacco smoke as a toxic air contaminant. And the U.S. Surgeon General say that there are no safe levels of tobacco smoke. This means that there will be more illnesses worsening of existing health conditions and possibly more deaths. Hello, my name is Karen Obedia. Today I'm going to be talking about stress and its correlation to smoking. There are many different factors that contribute to a person choosing to smoke. That being said, there is no one way to isolate one factor and say that that's the primary reason. Although we cannot label any concrete causes for one to choose the path towards smoking, we can say some major risk factors surface from psychological purposes. Stress in specific seems to be one of the highest risk factors. Stress in general is defined as a psychological and a physical response of the body that occurs whenever we must adapt to changing conditions, whether those conditions be real or perceived, positive or negative. Positive stresses are like weddings, getting a job promotion, getting a new car, and things along that line. Negative stresses can be a breakup, getting in a car accident, someone dying in your family, and things like that. The problem with stress, negative stressors are that they can cause a person to look for ways to deal with them. Some people are able to take that stress and work with it in a positive manner like yoga, sports, and other relaxing activities. Others cope with stress by using psychoactive drugs that would make their mood feel better. Tobacco falls underneath this category. It's not illegal, which is why many people end up using uh, tobacco. Some studies have shown that adolescents smoking is related to negative instances. As kids, they were probably beaten or underprivileged and just had a tough life, and then they choose, then they choose to smoke. People that smoke cigarettes say that smoking helps alleviate their minds when they are feeling stressed, sad, angry, and other emotions. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the USDHHS, reports that cigarette smoke has more than 4,000 chemical compounds in it. Many of those compounds lead to the effects that smoking has on the brain and the body. Becoming a smoker is not simply in one's DNA. There are many social factors, i.e. the people that you associate yourself with, that can manipulate the mind of someone to begin smoking. Teens who experience stress a lot have a larger risk of smoking cigarettes and in part become dependent on nicotine. These teenage smokers are becoming more and more addicted to cigarettes and it makes more stress in their life should they choose to quit the vast repeated habit. Studies show that adolescents that smoke more than 20 cigarettes a day were at increased risk for an anxiety disorder by the time they were near the age 22. The reason that most smokers have general health problems is due to the lack of control they have with the drug. In the article, Daily Processes and Stress in Smoking, Effects and Negative Events, Negative Independence, and Gender, Michael Todd does a study on smokers ranging from adulthood His research says that laboratory research has shown that exposure to stressors can increase the puff rate and volume of smoking health, nicotine intake, and desire to smoke. The results of laboratory studies are useful for evaluating the validity of proposed causal relations but are limited in how well they can mirror natural occurring processes. The current study focuses on natural occurring stressors, perceived stress, and smoking behavior. Todd comes to the conclusion that stress, in fact, plays a part in smoking. The more that someone is stressed, the more that they smoke. It is also shown in most documented data that stress and smoking variables are stronger in males than in females. So based on all this information and the studies and research papers written on this topic, there is a clear correlation between smoking and stress. Higher rate of stress can lead to increased risk in smoking, and if one is already smoking, then the stress can increase from the amount of cigarettes that they smoke a day. These studies also show that men have a higher risk of being affected by these factors than the females are. Hi, my name is Jennifer 
Jacob, so I'm going to talk about the ingredients of cigarettes and how lung cancer can arise from smoking. There are approximately 600 ingredients in cigarettes. When burned, they create more than 4,000 chemicals. At least 50 of these chemicals are known to cause cancer and many are poisonous. While the public is warned about the danger of the poisons in these products, there is no such warning for toxins in tobacco smoke. The list of 600 additives approved by the U.S. government for use in the manufacture of cigarettes is something every smoker should see. Submitted by the five major American cigarette companies to the Department of Health and Human Services in April of 1994, the list of ingredients had been long kept a secret. The tobacco companies reported this information were the American Tobacco Company, Brandon Williamson, Leggett Group Incorporated, Philip Morris Incorporated, and the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. While these ingredients are approved as additives for foods, they were not tested by burning them. It is the burning of many of these substances which changes their properties, often for the worse. Over 4,000 chemical compounds are created by burning a cigarette, and 69 of those chemicals are known to cause cancer. Carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, hydrogen cyanides, and ammonia are all present in cigarette smoke. 43 known carcinogens are in mainstream smoke, sidestream smoke, or both. It is chilling to think about not only how smokers poison themselves, but what others are exposed to by breathing in the secondhand smoke. Nicotine is one of more than 4,000 chemicals found in the smoke from tobacco products. It is the primary component that acts on the brain. Smokeless tobacco products, for example, snuff and chewing tobacco, also contain many toxins as well as high levels of nicotine. Nicotine is a naturally occurring colorless liquid that turns brown when burned and takes on the odor of tobacco when exposed to air. There are many species of tobacco plants. The tobaccum species serving as a major source of today's tobacco products. Extensive studies show it is to have a number of complex and sometimes unpredictable effects on the brain and the body. Nicotine properties have been found to enhance its abusive potential. And cigarette smoking produces a rapid distribution of nicotine to the brain. With drug levels peaking within 10 seconds of inhalation, the acute effects of nicotine dissipate within a few minutes, causing the need to continue to repeat intake throughout the day. The medical consequences of nicotine exposure result from the effects of both the nicotine itself and how it is taken. Tobacco use accounts for one third of all cancers. For most, among the cancers caused by tobacco is lung cancer, the number one cancer killer of both men and women. In 90% of all lung cancer cases, there is a link to cigarettes. The cancer begins with an error, a mutation in a cell's DNA. Many mutations can be caused by the normal aging process or through environmental factors such as cigarette smoke, breathing in asbestos fibers, and exposure to radon gas. Researchers have found that it takes a series of mutations to create a lung cancer cell. Before coming fully cancer, cells can be precancerous in that they have some mutations that still function normally as lung cells. When a cell with a genetic mutation divides, it passes along its abnormal genes to the other, to the two new cells, which then divide into four cells with errors in their DNA and so on. With each new mutation, the lung tissue cell becomes more mutated and may not be as effective in carrying out its function as a lung cell. At a later stage of disease, some cells they travel away from the original tumor and start growing in other parts of the body. After compiling our data for our smoking observation, our total population, which we observed was four, consisted of 4,435 people. Out of this total population, 2,021 was males and 2,414 was females. In other words, 45.57% of the population was males and 54.43% of the population was females. In our study, we did not compare age groups. However, our observation did consist of college students ranking from ages 18 to 25 years old. Um, this makes up 100% of observation study. Um, to break it down further, out of our total population, 137 people were smokers, while 4,298 4, people were non-smokers. To break it down into percentage forms, out of the whole population, which we observed, 3.09% were 
smokers, while 96.91% were non-smokers. Even breaking it down even more further, as for just female population, which we observed, uh, 35 females were found to be smokers, while 2,379 females were non-smokers. And the percentage form for the 35 smokers was 1.45%, as compared to 98.75% of females who were non-smokers. For the male population, we found 102 male smokers compared to 1,914 non-smokers. And as in percentage form of the male population, 5.04% of the males were smokers compared to 94.96% of males who were non-smokers. So as a result of this data, we found that there, in total there was not much smokers compared to non-smokers. Tobacco use has been linked to many different diseases as it is slowly becoming more understood in the scientific community. There have been many studies to determine the adverse effects of tobacco smoke on individuals, yet to date there have been numerous setbacks in determining the direct correlation between smoking and the numerous diseases that accompany the behavior. Smoking has, however, been positively linked to these numerous diseases and its effect on the overall health of the individual. According to the CDC, the diseases associated with smoking are, but not limited to, lung cancer, heart disease, pulmonary diseases, stroke, sudden infant death syndrome, respiratory diseases, oral, larynx, and esophageal cancer, as well as dependency regarding stress and anxiety. According to the most recent data from the California Health Interview Survey, males are more likely to smoke than females. The percent of male smoking between the ages of 18 to 25 is 20 percent, yet females total a percent of 16.8 percent. A total of 18.2% of the population currently smokes. This data could be different due to the sample size of the survey or due to college students smoking less due to various reasons. This is consistent with pilot testing done by the researchers which males are more likely to smoke than females. With a population size of 57,000 males and 71,000 females, the sample size is large enough to consider the data to be consistent. The purpose of our research is to determine the smoking frequency between males and females. The study design that we have chosen to accomplish our research is based on observational study. In our observational research, we separated smokers from non-smokers to compare our re results in the end. To achieve the purpose of this research, we divided each of those two categories to include males and females. As we each did our observations, we recorded our data for comparison. After the data collection, the data was calculated and compared. And in the end, we can determine the smoking frequencies between males and females, as well as determine that males are more likely to smoke compared to females. There are protocols for our research. The researchers are going to study and see if there is a gender prevalence related to smoking in university students that could possibly be associated with stress. The researchers will then have to observe and count various males and females who are smoking in the smoking areas on the Fresno State campus, as well as the number of non-smokers that also pass through the area at a given time of day. The researchers will objectively determine the genders of the individual. Since the campus is not a small setting, the observations will be done at a wide array of locations on campus with active smoking areas. This will give the researchers a fluctuation in numbers due to the nature of certain areas and the high and low traffic problem. The researchers will have no interactions with the participants in any way. The researchers will be strictly objective and watch the subjects from in a reasonable distance. This will be done so that the subjects do not feel awkward and change their mannerisms. The researchers do not want the participants to unconsciously change their habits due to knowing that someone is watching and recording data on what they're doing. After observations are completed, and the data is collected and sorted, the researchers will attempt to determine if there is an association between smoking and gender. In conclusion of our study, gender prevalence related to smoking in the university students, we concluded there are more females in our total population. The male population is smaller in the study group, but the males have a much higher percentage of smokers. 
our results tell us males smoke more than females. Secondly, our study tells us more than 90% of college population from our study does not engage in smoking. Our study tells us there is association between gender and smoking. Males are 4% more likely to smoke in comparison to females in our study. In our protocol, our hypothesis was males are more likely to engage in smoking than females. Our hypothesis was correct. A, factoring, a factor allowing it to be easier on participants, contributing to them knowing that they are participating in the study. Challenges to validate the study could have been bias in the Hawthorne effect, which has to do with changes in behavior as a result of knowing that you're being studied. Selection bias is one of the three most common bias in the study because of how subjects are chosen to be in the project. Our results could have been altered because fewer men would have smoked knowing they were being researched. Our study did not have selection bias because we did not single, single out anyone. We counted everyone in the research area. Out of 4,435 4, college students, more than 4,298 students chose not to smoke. We can conclude these students are not smokers. After conducting our study and research, we concluded gender does not does play a role in smoking in this study. Males are more likely to smoke than females by 4% in our study. Quit this, quit this